Hello again, everybody. I'm going to be doing lesson 3.10 and 3.11, although together they're really only three constructions that you need to know. So I'm going to go over those constructions and again remind you that the only way to get good at constructions is to practice them. So in the PowerPoint that I shared with you, it looks very similar to the last constructions PowerPoint. I have the link to our virtual, um, our virtual compass and straight edge if you'd like to use that. If you like to use the handheld one, you're welcome to use that also. And then I also have the link to the directions of whatever construction I'm talking about. So we're gonna start with the construction of an equilateral triangle. So to do an equilateral triangle, if you click on that link, it will take you to this page right here. And if you click run, you can follow the steps one by one with it, or you can click on the printable instructions and follow the steps that way. I'll show you how I do it, which is pretty much how they're doing it here. <clears throat> but what you're gonna do, okay, is you're gonna give yourself a segment that you want to be the length of the side. Usually this will be given to you like on a piece of paper, but since we're not working on paper, you'll have to give yourself a side. Okay, so this is gonna be how long the side of my equilateral triangle will be and give yourself a point, any old point you want. This will be the vertex, one of the vertices of our equilateral triangle. Then you're gonna take your compass and you're gonna open it up the length of the side that you gave yourself. I do, I would lock it. You're gonna come over to the point you gave yourself and you can make two small arcs if you would like or you can make one big arc. I like doing the one big arc just because it's just one step. And then you're gonna pick a point on that arc, any old point, pick any point you want on there. Okay. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna take our compass and it should still be open the length of those two points because I haven't changed anything here. Oh, it's out of control, come on. Come on, there we go, oh my goodness. Okay, you can see that the point and the pencil, the distance between the point and the pencil is the same distance between my two points here. Go over to that point you gave yourself and make another arc that intersects the first one. There we go. Okay. That intersection, put a point there. And so what we've done is we've created three points that are all equidistant from each other. Remember equidistant means same distance apart from each other. So I can connect those three points, oops, with a line. Are you kidding me? All right, let me do this one more time. It's definitely having it glitched. All right, again, watch what I'm doing here. Give yourself a point, open up your compass, so that one point's on one end point and the pencil's on the other. Lock your compass. Come to the point you gave yourself. Make a big old arc. Pick a point on your arc. That'll be another vertice of your triangle. And then take the point of your compass, put it on your new point, and make another intersection that intersects the first arc you made. Give that a point. There we go. And now with a straight edge, connect your three points and you will indeed have a triangle that has all equidistant sides. Remember an equilateral triangle has all congruent sides, which this one does. Simple as that. All right, that was equilateral triangle. Then we've got a square. Okay, so you do need to remember a little bit of about squares from middle school when you learned about shapes, maybe even elementary school. What's gonna happen is they're gonna give you a side. And you, you're gonna have to give yourself your own side here since it's not on your computer screen. Okay, they're gonna say here's side AB or whatever it's labeled. This is one side of a square, construct the rest. Well, one thing that you need to remember about a square is it has all 90 degree angles. Okay. So what you're gonna do 
is we need to construct a perpendicular line through one of these vertices. So we're going to extend the side AB. And you can use your straight edge to do that or a straight line here. And then you're going to take our compass. And we're going to follow the steps of creating a perpendicular line through a point on the line. So I make an arc here and I swing it around and I'll make an arc over here. And then using those two intersections, so I'll put my point on this intersection. I'm going to open this up a little bit and lock it again. Make an arc above, and you can make an arc below if you want. It's not necessary, but you could. And then I'll put my point on the other intersection and make another arc. And now what I've done is this point up here connected to B will be a perpendicular line. Remember perpendicular means they make 90 degree angle. So I can go ahead and label this 90 degrees if I want to. Okay. So now I know this is 90 degrees and this is gonna be the length of one side. So I'm gonna take my compass and I'm going to open it up the length of AB now. So one point on A, pencil on B, lock it. I'm gonna make an arc above. And I'm gonna make the same size arc here above B. I want this blue arc up here to intersect the side and it doesn't. So I'll just take my straight edge and make that line a little bit longer so it does intersect. And now I'll take my compass on that intersection and make another arc. So looking at my blue intersections right now, I have a point here and a point here. They're equidistant from each other and they're equidistant from A and B. And I know that's 90 degrees. So I can go ahead and connect my four corners and that bl blue quadrilateral that you see is indeed a square. And if you need those steps again, you're welcome to rewatch this video or click on the link that I have on the PowerPoint slide. And the last construction that we need to know for this unit is how to do a hexagon. This one's my favorite. I think it's really fun. What you're gonna do with a hexagon is you're gonna start with a circle. So give yourself a point as the center Definitely make sure you label where the point is because once you move that compass, you won't know where it is anymore. Put your point on the point of your compass on the point you just gave yourself and give yourself a circle. There it is. Okay, keeping your compass at the same setting. Um, well, first put a point on the circle, any old point you want, like here. There we go. That's going to be where I start. Then put your point there and you're just going to make arcs that intersect the circle. So here I have one arc, I have this new intersection, so I'm going to move my compass to that intersection and make another arc. And I'm going to continue to do, follow that process the whole way around. Notice that my last one intersected my original point. How many intersections did I just make? Well, I started with this one. Two, three, four, five, six. So I have now have six vertices for my polygon. That's a hexagon. So there's your inscribed hexagon in a circle. It's also another way that you could do an equilateral triangle because technically, I could skip every other point. And I have an equilateral triangle there also. But we're, we were really just talking about hexagon here. Okay, so that was constructions. Make sure you practice them because they're not gonna go away. 
All right, and the last thing you need for the lesson today is our attendance quiz word. If you aren't good at constructions, all that means is you need more practice. Today's attendance word, practice. Spell it correctly, please. Practice. Make sure that you enter that word before noon on Wednesday. The attendance quiz will close at noon on Wednesday. And don't forget the lesson check. Have a great day, guys.